God be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. That's a that's a story or a parable. Where it matter, but it doesn't matter. He he's not. Would you could could I tell that story any other setting and still not be re, quote unquote religious? Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm gonna get to a, a, a key point. Uh, who's who's the, who's who's hosting the party? There you go. Right, you got right. If you hosting you it, the party. Exactly. Exactly. I understand yeah. when you ask who, who's hosting the party. If you're not hosting the party, but you you know someone and you're playing the music, I, I think what you have to understand is when it says that just shall live by faith, he's talking about you. Yeah. yeah. Right. You yeah. Shall live by faith. Right. Now you don't have the right to try to enforce other folks to live by faith. Exactly. That's true. But you have to be kind of sensitive and wise, and you have to kind of let the spirit of God kind of lead you. Excellent and, point. So you gotta you gotta know how because see. See, what we think is we don't give the Spirit of God enough credit. He, he knows how to get you in place to witness where witnessing is acceptable. Yeah. Right. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. God don't want to hear the gospel. Right. But so I want him to lead you. Now, if you're hosting the party. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's <laughs> a different story. But now, if you ain't the host. Yeah, that's a different story. I like, I like what you said there, uh, Elder. If, if you hosted and they got an issue with it, they don't need to be there anyway. <laughs> well, they, they, well if, you, to come. if you're hosting, just don't invite Brett Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, Jimmy. <laughs> I, I love you anyway, brother. <laughs> but but I, I still want to throw another part, too, is that, like I said, Jimmy, is appropriate. If you host and you're in charge, like if you do something at your job, you have a meeting at your job, then but you if you're at your job, you're not supposed to to say gospel music at as part of your presentation, or to put it put up the cross up there as part of your presentation. Why but not? Thank you. you. You're not allowed to. Why not? But but it's not. Why not? I mean, is there a reg that says you you cannot play gospel music? You can't. Uh, it's this. Uh, it's like uh, we had to go through some the sensitivity or something. You can't. You yeah. can't they, they had a problem sometimes if you had up your uh, religious material up around your cubicle. Yeah, but why right? not? And and well, they, they have an FI that says you what you can't, what you can, you can't do. I'm just saying this. Yeah, and, 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 and it makes sense, right? But do we do we do we confront it or do we just let it slide? Well, I don't ever because I'm finding out that a lot of things that Christians backed away from had nothing to do with the law, the constitution, or anything else. Well, it was I think the I think brother brother Addison, I, I I guess we can look up the different policies that's out there, but I mean that's well, why somebody complained about the uh uh the guard saying have a blessed day. Somebody referred they had to look it up in the reg to see if that's appropriate or not. You know what I mean? Yeah, but uh, that that saying "have a blessed day" is right. not. Well, let's go. It's, it's it's not a a scripture, and it's not pressing uh, a, a religion. And they still say "have a blessed day." They cannot stop someone from saying "have a right. blessed day." But it was challenged. The point I'm saying. Yeah, it, it may have been challenged. Now I do remember uh, when I was over in Okinawa in our shop. They were uh, playing music, and somebody was offended with the the yeah. music that was playing. Right, and so it got to the point where we either accommodate everybody, yeah, or, or we don't have no music at all. Right, and they can do that. That's that they can do that. And so that that's that's where that goes as far as the the regulation. But yeah, and so and so it's just they, 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 they out cannot. Of you can't they pray out of school, and now we can teach homosexuality. We can teach all these alternate lifestyles. We can we can have the two daddies and the two mamas. We can bring all that in there, but you got to take Christ out. You got to stop but, talking about that. I don't. I, don't I, I think that you know we that's a we, we might go too far in the rabbit trail on that. But I'm saying that it, Jim asked the question: What is appropriate? I mean, they're saying certain things in the job you can't 
the, the, the separation of, of, of church and state. You, they, I think even that y'all heard this thing, the statement before said two things they don't want y'all to do about the job, uh, politics and religion. Well, let's not go down politics because I don't even want to. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm saying, but those let's, let's, just, let's just move on because I know, right? I'm saying, so here's a Jimmy, there's some there's places where I can say appropriate to, to use, but I still want to throw something at y'all is that. Some of the aspect of how Jesus taught and walked with those parables, he still did the kingdom principles in his conversations and in, 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 in illustrations and in the parables, right? Like the Good Samaritan is a good example of, hey, you can call that religious you want, but it really is talking about the fact of being able to treat somebody with respect and care for life, right? Well, let's, well you know, let's, let's be honest. Uh, Jesus didn't go to these places. They came to him. Well, he walked around. He most, I'm, I'm saying, yeah, he walked to these places, but they encamped around him while he was speaking, and he began to speak. Uh, I don't, I, and, and even back then, I don't think they had any rules and regulations. About what he could and could not say. What? Well, well, you uh, remember for the, for the most give, part. Let's give an example. The example was Jackia's house. Jackia's was Zacchaeus, I think his name was, was a tax collector. Uh huh. Right? And and he went to Zacchaeus house. He he said mm -hmm. Zacchaeus, I, I I'm supposed to be at your house. So he did kind of invite himself, or he said, look, God told okay, him. But, here. And I'm yeah, saying but, is that those people were. The, the Pharisees and Sadducees were complaining because here is Jesus, supposed to be a man of God, fellowshipping with these sinners. So I'm saying that there is some people thinking that there's a, that's not, Jim, is that correct? That's like, that's not a pro, at least the well, I, I, leaders. I'm, I'm kind of, I really like uh, what Bishop said in that. Um, who's hosting? Who's hosting? Right. You know, are you disrespecting another man's? Uh, house, so to speak. Um, also in that, I mean, if an organization or a particular thing has come together for a particular purpose, and that's the focus, that's what we want everybody focused in on, then it could become a distraction from the purpose of what's going on. That has to be taken into account. But then too, you know, like I think about like the prison systems as well, in that if you give the right to one, then you have to give the right to all. So then now if I'm at work, this guy that worships the devil, he can can he burn incense over there in his cubicle and, and be chanting and have amulets out and uh, and all kind of stuff going on as well. That may be a distraction to me from me doing my job, just as if you know what I'm doing with the gospel music or whatever may be a distraction from him to doing his job. So I do think there are some inappropriate places and times and things, and I and I and I go back to I go back to what Bishop said as well too. We don't give the spirit of God enough credit to recognize that listening to him, even in an inappropriate place or time or situation, if he's prepared the ground and he tells you do this and do that, then he knows that the, that, that the things are right for the picking. And then that's what you need to follow. I think just a blanket statement of I should be able to do and act high this kind of way everywhere in any setting. I think that's not decent and in order. So I think it has to, it has to do with listening to the voice of God and also respecting whatever you've been invited to or whatever gathering there may be from, from the, from the perspective of the host. And I, and I guess I'll shut up at that and, point. And, and, and then I want to throw, we got to do the communion, brother, brother uh, Jackson, can we leave real quick? But I do like to throw it in as, as we finish uh, with the communion is to talk about the live by faith. Does it doesn't necessarily mean that I have to be ministering the gospel in a way that is coming from the scriptures, or could I do the same thing Jesus did in the parables? Those parables was not him preaching. He was giving examples of the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is like this. And you can give, you can, to me, you can illustrate the kingdom using parables of this day and time that people can understand. Uh, and you can, <laughs> Jimmy said a long time ago that the Bible was not a, a religious book, but that was a book of government. 
it, yeah. And the one thing that I, yeah. when I think about what we we how we perceive ourselves, I'll get your communion out for, real quick. The limitations is actually being put on us by us. Yeah. The world system is going to see us any kind of way they want to. I, exactly. Want to see that we're practicing religion. I'm not exactly. going to say to you, I'm not a religious person. Right. I, look, really, look. I, I think religion sucks. And, and, not, and, and if we don't get beyond religion in this lifestyle, we're really jerking it around because look, our God is King. He's exactly. governor. He's ruler. So exactly. how do we how do we stop serving him in certain settings? Well, that's well, what you got. That's yeah, what I'm going to talk about. Let's do the communion real quick first for Brother Jackson because I want him to. I like the fellowship okay. and communion with him. If you don't mind, right. go right ahead. All right, Brother Jackson, you go ahead and lead that. If you don't mind, let us, pr let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, you are worthy to be praised, honored, and glorified. Worthy of worship for all of eternity. Dear Lord, soften our hearts right now. Any sin that is, is in us, let us just confess it to you spiritually and forgive us for our sins, Father. Uh, for we fail you many times, but we thank you for your grace, your unmerited favor in our lives. Because we believe in uh, you, we believe in, in your son, Jesus. And Jesus, that is why right now we, we do this ceremony. Yeah. Because as you told, told the disciples, it, Anytime that we do this communion service, yes, and we are to remember you. We remember your life. We remember your suffering. We remember your death. And we remember the fact that God raised you from the dead because you are, you were, and you will forever be that perfect sacrifice so that we would have a way back to you, the Father. And dear God, we just thank you for the love that you displayed. Jesus, we thank you for your example and Holy Spirit, we thank you for yeah. residing in us and helping us to be that light and giving us this opportunity to continue to grow. Yes. Oh Lord, thank you and, and, and continue to humble us, yes. dear Father, as we go on this journey. And now Jesus, we take this, this bread we, or whatever substance that we have that represents your body. Yes. And we know that what you went through, we could not have done it. Come Not on. for a million lifetimes, dear Jesus. Yes. But we thank you for who you are in yielding to the will of the Father. Yes. Not your own. And so we say thank you, thank, thank you, and thank you, and amen. <laughs> Take the bread, eat it, and remember so the, the Son of God. Amen. For the healing of my body. Amen. Amen. And now, whether or not you have a cup, that has anything in it. The thing is, is we are going to pause again and yes, and remember our Lord Jesus. Yes, because we're doing this in the spirit. Yes, it's not a matter of any of the material things that we have. Come on now, <laughs> the Lord in us in the spirit. We, we we know that it was your blood that was shed for all of mankind. Yes, we know that it was your blood that was the only acceptable thing, your life. Yes. Mm. And that the, that the God of the heavens, the mm. God of the universe put all of the wrath on you. Yes. And it should have been on each of us. Mm. You who he loves. Yes. And dear Jesus, we thank you. Thank you. For what you did. Even at the point where you, you stated God, why has thou forsaken me? You still come on. didn't turn back. Come on. <laughs> so Jesus, because yeah. of the faith that you displayed, we display our faith for you now. Yes. And we take and we drink this cup uh -huh. in remembrance of you. Hallelujah. Um, Highest praises. Amen. Amen. And we thank you, dear Father in heaven, uh, in your divine wisdom, you've, you've, you've shown us love. Yes. You've given us a fellowship. Uh, we here who, who didn't know each other decades ago. Yes. And we yes. know each other now. Yes. And even more so, dear Father, it goes beyond uh, what's in the secular world, but we are brothers yes. and sisters in Christ Jesus. Yes. And that is so much more. We have gained treasures in heaven because of the faith that we have in your son, Jesus. Yes. And we just thank you. Thank you. And I look forward to, to, to coming together once again. Yes. According to your will and your way. 
We yeah. say all these things in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. 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 All right, brothers. Y'all be blessed. You be blessed, bro. Have a good week. All right. I am All blessed. Right. <laughs> All right. Amen. I, I said stay blessed. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> and look, if you're not blessed, you've just been blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right now. All right, bro. Hey, 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 Jimmy, I want to get back to that. Cause I, I want to round on this. Because maybe I think that's the biggest problem I see is people understand to live by faith does that mean that I'm 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 preaching the gospel? Well, I was going to say to that, in that to walk by faith, to live by faith, we can't get to the point where that implies that you got to be saying something. That's my point. You, you, you don't you never talking. have to. You don't. You don't ever have to say or be <laughs> preaching or quoting scriptures or playing gospel music. It's a lifestyle. And Come I on, think man. that's and that that's more important and a greater testimony Come on. than than uh, than and then then like like that saying the old saying has been said uh, we should always uh, preach the gospel and sometimes use words yeah. uh, it kind of it yeah. kind of goes back to that saying but anyway right. a lot of it is just it's just how you live what you stand for what you represent what yeah. you do what you don't do how you carry yourself so right. you know walking right. by faith and living by faith is not near, not near, necessarily something coming out of your mouth anyway Come on, you know that's a totally different context exactly but, yeah that's all, that's what i'm trying to say because i'm saying if, if we look at the scripture and study christ and his walk i mean some of the conversations if, if, if that's not a church service he's having at the time or some of those conversations that that even the, even how about the one about the woman at the well that woman in the well, is, it was like, could you give me a cup of water? I mean, that's that's how it started off, right? Well, think about, think about that now. If the gospel addresses the whole of one's living, Come on. that means that everything can be a potential door to discuss the kingdom. Yes, sir. So you don't have to, you don't have to necessarily start out by talking directly. Come on, just, now. Talk about the everyday issues of life and let the Spirit of God, he, he'll open a door for you to, to talk about it. Come on, now. That verse you had up early, here's what Paul said. You quoted this verse about his manner of living? Yeah, right. He had a verse up there saying, he told Timothy, you know my doctrine. <laughs> okay, you know my doctrine, basically my teaching. Yeah. And then he said, my manner of living. Right. That's right. Um, That's listen. right. Now listen, what we've got to do is, is that the doctrines and teaching are going to be the very essence of your value, your beliefs, your yeah. convictions. Your value, your belief, and conviction have to get turned into practical application in the way you live your life. Exactly. So you, so you can preach the gospel by how you live primarily. Because if you if you in a pulpit preaching the gospel and your life is out of sync with what you're preaching, you ain't got no power in the first place. Period. And you know, Lee, when you can go back, and I ain't gonna call no names because you know I would say Corey's name, you know, out loud like that. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 we had a guy we used to we used to play golf with a lot. And I'm gonna tell you something, every other word out of his mouth, you know, sometimes, depending on the conversation, may be fouled or four lettered or whatever the case may be. But just as sure, we run up on Lee, oftentimes he really dialed it back or he'd apologize when he did it or he would say he was sorry. And, and, and Lee don't mean to say it nothing. Like, man, look here, be yourself. You know, be, be yourself. But in fact, it was the effect that it had on it because he knew what he stood for, what he didn't stand for, how he lived his life and what was important to him. And so just out of that, he tried to respect that and uh, and uh, and that's how he lived. And so that just their testament to you don't have to really say something. If you stand for certain things, you're around people. They come to know that they tend to respect that and respect who you are if they respect you as a person. Right. In other words, that's who you are. I mean, I think that's why they're talking about even with the Muslims and so forth. They 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 said that's their culture. So therefore, they give accommodation for it. The Jewish people, some of the things like they're wearing their hats or uh or certain clothing, they say that's because their culture is only when it comes down to Christianity is when people sit there and say, you know, you can dial yours back, you can put yours in an appropriate place. But in reality, this is our way of life. This is where we're living. 
And living doesn't necessarily have to mean, let me tell you, go to just like this scripture right here you refer to, 2 Timothy uh, 3.10. You know, we don't have to go and talk to people saying, go, let me talk to you about verse 2 Timothy 3.10. Let, let me just talk about the fact is that that the Good Samaritan is if there's a person in need, help the person out. I see, I mean, I've seen commercials where you have people doing what do you call pass forward. If you do something good to somebody else, try to do a good deed to have that person just do the same to somebody else. And that's still giving the, the kingdom's principles. It's giving the king principle, but is it giving the king credit? Well, 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 look, you give the glory to God. I think that's the that's your appropriate being appropriate is I'm giving glory to God. If you get promoted, you have a promotion ceremony. Give God the glory because that's my ceremony. I'm being promoted and I'm telling you where it came from. That's my testimony. If, if, if I'm getting the chain of command and taking over a command, I'm saying is I'm giving God the glory. That's appropriate because I'm the one that got the promotion or got the command. But if I'm not the one, then then I can say, man, hey, you blessed, brother. And the person I'm not blessed, I did on my own. Oh, well, okay. Well, you did on your own then. Hallelujah. Uh, power to you. I want to go back to this question, this issue, because I think it, it is something that I'm looking at right now. And there are certain <coughs> things that need to be revisited time and time again. And that is, uh, what does it mean to live by faith? Okay, yeah. See, that, that, this, this is a very critical thing. And, and I think that uh, uh, if we are not constantly engaging God and seeking light on what he has in mind when, when he inspires the writer of scripture to use these phrases. See, I, I'm finding out that these phrases that we have turned into cliches and just ran off with it made up of, of, of doctrine, these phrases actually were being used because they, these men were looking at something. God was enlightening them to see something. And what they saw demanded these phrases. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is, is allow the Spirit of God to, to it so influence our minds and our thoughts and our imagination and use our imagination so that when we see, when we start reading these phrases, that he can recreate that same reality that he was showing these men. Because it's, it's only one truth. Right. So when I think about walking by faith, see, see that's, this, is, this is the very heart of what Christianity is all about. Yeah. So, so, so what, what, what does God mean in, in Zechariah, and, no, in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse number 4, mm -hmm. that Paul picks up and, and says in Romans chapter 1, verse 17, that he tells the Galatians in chapter 3, verse number 11, Come that on the now. Hebrew picks up in Hebrew chapter 10, verse number 38, that the just shall live by faith. Mm -hmm. Now, Peter says something, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5, he says, he said, we are kept. Every believer is being kept yeah. by the power of God. Come on now, sir. Through faith. Yes, sir. So, so when I think about, about walking in faith and living by faith, first of all, you, you, we have to understand that this this instruction mm -hmm. has to do with a a a, 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 a mindset, an attitude, a perspective that there is always this awareness that I need God. Yes. <clears throat> that I, that it, that I'm always looking to God. Uh -huh. So that. In the everyday affairs of life, God is always a part of my perspective, a part of my picture, and I'm walking in reliance and dependence upon him. Yes, sir. Always. Yeah. So that he is now free Come on. to lead me. It, it doesn't mean 
that I am choosing certain things, it means that I have come to realize, this is what Jesus said. He said, Adam <laughs> could do nothing of himself. No. <laughs> and then he said, without me, you can do nothing. So I, I, I'm having to learn now that this really is, it really is the kind of a, a description of, the, of a relationship that we have that, that, that I'm always in the place where I'm ready for obedience. Now, now it's interesting that the word obedience, and I, I'll run a test on you guys to see if you had the same experience. I had never looked up the word obedience. Mm. And when I looked it up, it didn't mean what I thought it meant. Okay. <laughs> you know what obedience means? Obedience is made up of two words, a preposition and then a root word. Okay. The preposition is hupo, and it means to be under. To be on the mean that there's something above you. Okay. It's kind of like what the what the what the centurion told Jesus. I'm a man under authority. Authority. Okay. I'm under. There's someone above me. Okay. Hoopo, Hoopo had that that picture that you are under. You're the underling. Yeah. <laughs> and there's somebody else above you. Right. And then the other root word has to be with to hear. Mm. Blow my mind. Interesting, yeah. To hear and to be under. And to be under. That's like that, yeah. That's why get Jesus said that great faith. I haven't found such great faith in all Israel. So 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 obedience really has to be with had to deal with to be under uh -huh. the speaking of somebody else. Come on, sir. That makes sense? Yes, sir. Like to seek you. Give me the word up. Give me the word up. I don't know that word about that. Wow. So obedience really had to do with that you're the underling and there's someone speaking in, in the context being given. See, it kind of makes sense because Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. My voice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then he said, and another he will not follow. Come on. <laughs> so there could be a whole host of voices out there, but because of the relationship, you can discern the voice of the one that had died for you. Right. I, I had a guy giving this example that he went to the the school to pick up his son, all the kids had been released to the gym, and the gym was full of children, making all kinds of noise and playing. That's a whole, you know how children are, they're, they're having a ball. He walks in there and he sees the instructors and all these people kind of keep corralling the kids, and then he spots his son over there. And so he just yells out his name. He called him. He called his name. <laughs> he didn't hear him the first time. The next time he called him, he said, that child stopped dead still. <laughs> I stopped in his track and started looking around. In the midst of all of that noise, in the midst of all that chaos, his name was called by his daddy. Yes, and that child stopped and started searching and looking. You're like, I, I, I hear a lot of stuff going on, but I think I heard my daddy's voice. <laughs> so in the midst of all this chaos and all this speaking, we have we are to be tuned and trained to discern the voice of God. So that we can hear him. Yes, and I think that living by faith really encompasses being brought to the place where we are tuned in and asserting and waiting and looking and longing to hear God speak to us. Yes, sir. So that we can be brought under what he says, so that we can obey what he says. Mm -hmm. Therein, we, 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 we demonstrate what it means to walk by faith, to live by faith. Yes, sir. You know, one of the things too, Bishop, and, and, and if you don't mind, I like, Elder, if you could read this, this is interesting uh, about living God again. This is the requirement. This is one of the things that came out of scripture to say to how we should teach or walk and, and so forth is teach sound doctrine. Look, look at that one.